How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Junluka, aka Dr. Calcano, and I'm a first year family medicine resident working and studying here in Canada. In today's video, I'm really excited. We're adding another entry to my series of interviews looking at different people and their journeys and experiences before they ended up in medical school or in the medical profession in general. We have Safa on today, and Safa is going to share some really valuable things with us in her perspective as a refugee who moved first to America and then Canada and is now currently enrolled as a first year medical student. And I get a lot of questions from international medical students and people trying to come from all different parts of the world. And I'm really hoping that Saf is able to share some tips with us today. Well, I know she did. I already recorded the interview with her. I'm going to break it up. I'll timestamp everything. The audio when I was speaking seemed to get a little bit muffled on my end. So I'll try and kind of edit this as best we can. But I hope you guys find this informative. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Either myself or Saf will try and answer them ourselves. Okay, so we'll see you in a little bit. Hope you enjoy. Welcome, everyone. I I am Safa Bashir and I am a first year medical student at University of Alberta, uh, class of 2026. Mm -hmm. I currently live in Edmonton. Um, some of the stuff that I really love to do, especially in Canada, is going for a hike. Good hike is always great uh, for my uh, mental health and also uh, you, I get to enjoy beautiful scenes each and every single time. Most probably not in the winter, but <laughs> I um, enjoy doing that. I also love painting and doing some henna art. It's really related to my culture, so I like to uh, have that aspect as well. And mm -hmm. how have you been liking medical school here in Canada so far? And so far, um, it's pretty good. I love the, um, the diversity that I see in medical school. I love um, how supportive each and every one is, and in terms of the resources that you have at medical school as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the student life as well. You get to enjoy some, at least in first year medical student, you get to enjoy uh, the orientation week where you get to be introduced to different organizations, trying to figure out your extracurricular um, aspects as well of medical school. Awesome. And are you involved in any extracurriculars in your first year? Did they let you do anything right away? Yeah, so I am currently part of the Black Medical Student Association. I'm currently part of the Muslim community um, in the uh, medical school as well. So having different uh, roles in different communities also is amazing. I went to multiple events and I'm currently trying to kind of find my way through the different positions that we have um, and different places that could uh, match what I want to do. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that because when you first get into medical school and you have some experience that you're going to talk about in just a little bit already with medical school, but it is a, a pretty busy time, especially if you're moving from one state to the other. So it's awesome that you're able to get right away into all these different events and organizations. That, that's really nice. So, so now we talked about it a little bit already and you brought me up to speed myself, but maybe just share everyone else. What was your journey like to medical school leading up to where you are right now being in first year? To take you back at my story. So I am originally from Sudan. I actually arrived in Canada about uh, five years ago and I spent four years uh, in Calgary. I arrived as a refugee, um, have been into US first and then decided to come to Canada. Um, my background studies is I actually studied medical school for uh, five years out of six. And I know a lot of people will be shocked, like, why are you doing this again? But I did not have the chance to finish medical school back home. And um, due to some social circumstances that I've been going through, I needed to seek refuge into uh, another place um, to have more of um, my rights, to have what I want in, in life. And that's an important aspect. Um, then coming to Canada, it wasn't an easy choice and it wasn't an easy journey. And I know a lot of um, immigrants and newcomers and refugees will feel the same. To start with, it was a different environment. It goes up to 45 in my country degrees Celsius. And here it goes to minus uh, 30 something, which was like a lot uh, to take it. But um, as well in terms of culture and language, uh, that has been def definitely a barrier to a lot of services um, out there in community, even just 
to go around, to have your groceries, to find employment. That was a hustle for a while. Have you liked Canada so far? Has the transition been relatively easy for you, would you say? It wasn't an easy journey. I liked Canada in terms of how people were very welcoming. I could see some contrast from the cities that I've been into before Canada, and I could see that people in Canada very welcoming. They're more engaging. They're trying to help and trying mm -hmm. to talk to you at least and um, hear your story or provide the support if they could. And um, Canada is a beautiful country. I've been to Montreal or Montreal and mm -hmm. then Toronto as well. And then um, Vancouver for a bit and Calgary. So I stayed in mm -hmm. Calgary for the most part uh, mm -hmm. because I love the mountains. I've been reading about the mountains for my entire life, the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. I've never mm -hmm. seen them before. So wow. that was an amazing thing. Yes. So, so Safa, why don't you tell us a little bit about your application? Did you apply to medical school one time? Do you feel comfortable or, or multiple times if you applied multiple times? If you feel comfortable talking about your GPA and your MCAT scores, could you share any of that with us today? Yes, sure. When I was about to apply for medical school, I a lot of people will be doing their undergrad somewhere and then having their GPA and then their grades being transferred and then they will have to do um, the MCAT and then interviews. Uh, for me, it was a bit different because they, they needed to convert my grades uh, back from back home into a, a GPA. And back home, we do it more of a distinction, very good, um, that type of a scaling. We don't do uh, the numerical one. And that was a hustle because I was at the lower GPAs for the most part, or, although that I will be having distinctions and very good, um, my GPA, um, especially for University of Alberta, because they had a different way of converting it. And University of Calgary also gave me a different GPA. It was around 3.7 for Calgary, 3.4, I believe so in Alberta. Um, it was a bit frustrating because I was getting really good marks back home, but it's the conversion part which makes it always on the lower. And sometimes they have to drop some of the scores because they don't have that enough credits. So it was a hustle for me, but I made it to the cut point for all of the GPAs required, uh, especially if you are uh, in province applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, I was in province applicant for Alberta. So I made it uh, through the cut points. Um, so that's why I don't believe that medical school. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Is that okay? I'm yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I would just like to say, so you were saying that, um, so you already had your in province, Alberta, you were already in, in the progress of getting your Canadian citizenship. But you're saying that when they transferred your grades from the Sudan marks to the Canadian system, it made them a little bit lower. Is that right? Just the way the conversion works? Yes. Yeah. Got it. And, and is, do you know, is that a problem that a lot of international students face when they come to Canada? Yes, I believe that's a problem because you will be doing uh, very good at your uh, school, but mm -hmm. the conversion process will drop some of the courses that really have the highest marks and then you end up getting an average which is lower than your country average if you wanted to say kind of the conversion process brings it down because it doesn't take into account some of the classes this is how the system here works and they try to fit you in the system rather than finding a way where they can accommodate your uh, grade so i think that's a lot of um international graduate might be suffering from, especially from my country or someone with a similar uh, great system. Other okay. countries, I know they can transfer easily because they have similar system, a great system like in Canada, but okay. uh, my university was different. Got it, okay. And then sorry, just to carry on, you applied how many times to, to the system here? I applied twice. Uh, okay. For mm -hmm. And yeah. I got uh, interviews in both times so that's okay. something to highlight as well it's not it's not about your grades your grades cannot tell the full picture of who you are it's mm -hmm. more of the um the essays that you write and the experiences so for university of calgary you have to write about 10 uh, life experiences and try to give them an insight into who you are before meeting you right. uh, and that i felt you just need to understand what they are trying to get from you and then mm -hmm. use the right words to describe that. Um, and then 
you will get interviews. I believe so. I got them based on my experiences. Um, my GPA wasn't the best and wasn't that bad, 3.7, but okay. uh, the decisive factor is who you are at the end. Got it. Could you share your MCAT scores too? You wrote the MCAT one time or two times? I actually wrote it three times. So oh, the, wow. okay. the first time I, I wrote the MCAT, the MCAT and mm -hmm. actually that was something that I would uh, advise other uh, med, uh, incoming medical students. If you are looking into applying to medical school uh, yeah. and you're new to Canada or new to the uh, medical school uh, application process, maybe yeah. do more research on what is the MCAT about? What are they trying to test you? and how the process of the uh, the exam itself goes. So mm -hmm. at first I had went into the MCAT knowing that, okay, it's just a science background. I have science background, let's do the right. MCAT. Yeah, and I totally did not get the critical analysis part. So that was the uh, part that um, had me do it twice, the critical mm -hmm. analysis. The first mm -hmm. And because I have, I didn't have any clue about how to, I thought it was comprehension based. So I was thinking this is easy. And yeah. then I ended up getting the lowest on the, um, on the critical analysis. The other sections were good. And then when I wrote it on the second time, and this is my next advice, try as much as possible to have time for yourself. I was caught between work, family and studying. And I had pretty much busy schedule, not getting enough sleep. Um, overthinking for the most part, not having time for myself, like just going for a hike or a walk or talking mm -hmm. to someone about um, that I am struggling and it's just intense. I was just taking it all and I'm thinking that I can do this. Uh, right. I stayed for a longer time that, uh, that second try, but mm -hmm. again, I improved in all of my sections. It's just not the improvement that I was looking into, but mm -hmm. I applied anyways and still got an interview with that but at the okay. end of yeah i i was still did not was not accepted so that was something that i i looked into improving on the next time in the cat so the third time was the time when i was sitting down looking back into my past two mcats what i want to change first mm -hmm. was time for myself time to just a day off school off anything i'll just mm -hmm. be going um, if not a day, of, if not a day, half a day, just enjoying mm -hmm. walking or just being out with friends. And then I changed also my approach to uh, critical analysis. I started from the basics. What is analyzing text? Why is it hard for me uh, in the first place? Is it because I wasn't exposed to analyzing passages? Is it something um, that I need to overcome by learning from the basics? And that's what I did and eventually worked out. I improved uh, about six or seven marks on the, um, the cars. I ended up getting one uh, 28. Um, so that was a huge improvement. I last, last the one before that, I got 123, I believe so. So wow, that was- five points is a lot. That's, that's really good. Yes, yeah. And then your final little piece of advice, just to close off our interview for anyone watching, what do you want other students to know? Um, maybe, something down the line that you if you are struggling to get to medical school a lot of people have been there it's good to know that not everybody is lucky into um, getting into medical school with a lot of especially financial support um, mm -hmm. so i have been there and i know the barriers the language barrier the financial barriers and um, from my experience being resource resourceful is very mm -hmm. important. Um, look into the MCAT, uh, low income. Um, they have like an application where you get uh, many of the materials for free. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I resorted to. Uh, a lot of students out there in platforms like Reddit or uh, other platforms that you might know will be mm -hmm. able to help you with providing uh, books or advices. So try to be resourceful and, and find uh, a way that more suitable for you. Um, so that will help you a lot also in medical school uh, and in your life, hopefully. Um, it's a difficult, for, for a lot of people, it's very difficult journey, but it's doable and you can do it. Um, just have that mindset of uh, the positivity. 
I really appreciate your positive message. I think that it's something that's very, very powerful because you're right. It, it's not easy. And I'm, you know that probably better than anyone else. It's a long process and it doesn't always have to be linear. Sometimes where you think you're going is not where you're actually going to end up. But being able to adapt and seek out the proper resources and supports, I think, is so, so important. So one more time, Safa, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Hopefully everyone watching, hopefully you guys learned something as well. And we'll see you all in the next one. So everyone take care.